welcome to Adam Does Movies. I'm your host, Adam. Give you a little pregnant pause, keep you on your feet. You might be thinking, what is he going to say? It's got to be Adam, right? It would be weird if he said like Max. No, it's Adam. It's, it's a basic name for a podcast, but you know what? That's okay. I'm a pretty basic person, but I'm a movie lover. And that's something that I'm guessing we share, something we have in common. So every Monday, I'm dedicated to doing a 30-minute, 40-minute, whatever it ends up being, conversation with you, intimate, sharing memories of past film experiences, looking forward to what's on the horizon in the movie space. I'm very excited for this. I hope you are, too. I mean, you're listening, so that's already one step in the right direction for both of us in this relationship that we're forging together. The conversation today, the topic is movie experiences, my favorite, my top five. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, I'm holding up both hands so it looks like 10. My top five movie experiences, full stop, all time. Uh, That doesn't necessarily mean I enjoyed the movie I saw, but just everything around it was such a magical treasure of an experience, I had to put it on the list. We're also gonna go over some honorable mentions before we dive into this top five. I'm gonna begin now. And I should remind you that um, hopefully this sparks some of your own. As you're listening to me, you might be thinking, okay, I remember that year. I remember what movies I watched, going with my pa or my ma. For some reason, you don't say dad dad or mother or mom, you say ma and pa. Old timey is kind of your thing. Or you saw a movie with your best buddy. You biked down Main Street. You, you got a Sunday at the local cafe, and then you went to the game with Michael Douglas. It's a weird pull, I know, but that's where I went with it for some reason. Okay, we're going to talk honorable mentions. On this list, in no order, I took notes over here because there's no way I was going to keep this all in my brain. I have Adam's Family. I have Batman Returns. I have Happy Gilmore and... Waterboy. Why are these movies on here? Well, Adam's Family and Batman Returns, I saw when I was very young. I went with my cousins to both of them, I believe, in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I used to live there. Now I live in South Carolina. I still have a little bit of that accent, a little bit of the, a little bit of that Midwestern draw that people love. (laughs) Adam's Family was hilarious. Just full size. It was one of the first kind of grown up kids movies I saw. And I remember going with my cousins, thinking we were so cool together seeing this movie. I believe we were out on the sidewalk. It was a pretty late showing. And we were doing the thing that you can only do in colder states, where you pretend like you're smoking, but you have nothing in your hands. But it's so cold that you can see your breath. I recall doing that for quite a while before the movie started. I'm sure my dad just thought I was the best. Just what a cool kid that I have raised so far. I'm knocking it out of the park. His words that I made up. His words. Batman Returns, equally awesome. I remember it wasn't much longer. You know, there wasn't a lot of time between these two movies. I didn't take dates on these ones. In my top five, I I did a little research on them for your benefit. Right now, I'm just off the cuff trying to remember. But I recalled them being cool. And this was the first first time I went to a movie that was full. Packed house. Must have been one of the opening nights. It was such a spectacle. All the people in there laughing, uh, shushing. At one point, someone came in through the emergency exit, holding it open for someone to sneak in, I guess. I don't really know what was going on. Or how they knew it wouldn't, you know, activate some alarm. But they're kind of coming in, being loud, and someone said, Shut the hell up! Yelled at full bore. And everybody clapped. That was the greatest moment of Batman Returns for me. An already really cool film. I'm excited to see Michael Keaton back again in the cape and the cowl in the upcoming Flash movie. Don't know if it's going to be any good or not, but the trailer's pretty sweet. At least we got a cool trailer out of it. Okay, Happy Gilmore. We were running late to this movie. I remember we had moved to Monticello, Minnesota. We weren't there very long. This was probably one of the first weeks we were there. And my dad said, we should try to make it to Happy Gilmore. I don't know what we were coming back from. Probably some sort of a job thing for him that he dragged me and my brother to. We're coming back. We make it into the theater. It's still going through the projection opener thing where it's got the music. 
that song's playing in the background and it's it's doing a slideshow of different events in Happy's life, such as shooting a nail gun into his boss's head. I was laughing from that moment through the entire hour and a half movie. Never stopped laughing. Happy Gilmore was so freaking funny. It's still probably in my top 10 comedies of all time. Adam Sandler, those early ones, man. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, nailed it. Pun intended because of the nail that I mentioned. The aforementioned nail. Nail. Okay, mail, nail. It's, it's all the same. This is live. This is a, this, <laughs> we're doing this on the fly. There's going to be mistakes. Waterboy on the list. This isn't a movie that's probably even good. I only saw it once. I was young. I was in maybe high school. I remember seeing the movie. Uh, we were out of state at the time. We were going to see my uncle and cousins. So this would have been in Missouri or Misery as some people call it. People from Minnesota called it that. The, <laughs> I just remember the theater was packed because it must have been right near the college campus. And all the football players, cheerleaders had gotten together and went to Waterboy at the same time we did, us out-of-towners just passing through. It was a circus. Every time Billy, or I'm sorry, Billy Madison, every time Waterboy, I don't remember his name, was it Bobby something? Every time he smashed into one of the players, they were erupting. It was like a, a fire alarm went off in the back. Yelling, jumping, throwing popcorn. Absolutely obnoxious, but in the best way possible. If you can see a movie with a crowd that's incredibly hyped, super pumped to be there, that's like the best. That is the best experience you can get at a movie theater. Oftentimes in the last few years, and by few I mean mm, seven or eight, when did smartphones come out? That's when it all went to shit in the movie theater industry. But there are so many times now where the crowd ruins the movie instead of elevating it, instead of being there and cheering on the movie with you. Like I recall happening during Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, when Samwise Gamgeon... Samwise Gamgeon, is that right? Samwise something. Uh, Sam. We just call him Sam. He throws Frodo on his shoulders and he's carrying him up the mountain. The volcano as it's erupting and there, there, there's magma and ash flying. He can barely walk anymore. And we all remember him from Rudy, the actor. So we start slow chanting Rudy. 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 As he's going up this volcano to throw the ring into the fires below. Casting the evil out. It was so freaking epic. And yet, it's not even in my top five list. It probably should be, to be honest with you, now that I'm thinking back on it. Regardless, we have a good list up ahead. Okay, a couple more honorable mentions. Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot. One of the first female superheroes in the industry, in the comic book industry. What did we have before that? We had Tank Girl. Gross. We had Elektra. Don't even. There really was no su female superheroes. There was a Supergirl movie that came out back in the 80s. Complete schlock. Total trash. Uh, we've seen powerful female superheroes in X-Men. Storm, Rogue, Jean Grey, of course, all great, all fantastic. But no, sto no solos, no Han Solo movies for the ladies. So we get one with Wonder Woman. I take my eight-year-old daughter, Olivia, who really has no interest. But, you know, we, we give it a chance. She's, she'll go see anything. We watch this movie, and I will never forget leaving. And the look on her face, the eyes are wide. She is lit up like a Christmas tree. And she's like, Dad, Wonder Woman's awesome. I... I just, you, you take for granted, right? Because we've seen, we grew up, boys, men, we grow up watching all these cool superhero guys kicking ass, the Ninja Turtles, He-Man, Transformers, they're all these, you know, they're all male awesome protagonists. Then you have like the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, you have um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, yeah, there are femme fatales, there are strong female leads, of course. But we finally get it in the fantastical superhero space after all this time. And I just didn't really think about it 
as being much of a big deal. But through the eyes of a girl, through the eyes of a young girl's lens, yeah, of course, it is it is a big deal. It's fantastic. And I'm glad I had that with her. I'm glad I took her to the theater and we watched that together. It was it was great. And then Wonder Woman 2 uh, came out and ruined ruined everything. <laughs> Olivia, a few years older now, we watched at home because it was during the pandemic. She walked out uh, off the couch, out of the living room, not even 45 minutes in. She says, okay, I've seen enough. I'm good. And uh, the rest of the family spooled out as the movie was going. I'm the only one that finished Wonder Woman 84. Maybe in existence. That might be a fact. I don't know. I Prove me wrong. Okay, also... We have Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Holy shit, what a disaster of a film. I know some people eat it up. It's high art to them. It's amazing Zack Snyder masterwork stuff. To me, it was a disaster. It was a messy, edited, convoluted, nightmare-fueled fever dream that Snyder put onto the big screen. Okay, whatever, fine. This is, a, this is an honorable mention for me because I remember going to this movie... Meeting my brother, meeting some buddies, and meeting some fans of my show, Adam Does Movies on YouTube, and at the time, like, I don't go to a lot of movies my, with my brother anymore, so this was kind of a fun experience, you know, going to a big superhero movie, seeing some of these guys I haven't even met before, some of these fans, so this was just kind of a fun new experience for me. Regardless, the whole thing from beginning to end was a complete shit show. I ordered some buffalo wings from the theater, first of all. That was a mistake. I, I rolled the dice wrong here. The people have to go back and make it, and they would call me when it's ready. Well, there's only 10 minutes until the show starts. So every minute that goes by is an eternity for me. I'm on pins and needles, waiting for the wings to come out. I'm sweating bullets, Megadeth. I'm like, where? Where are the, where are the freaking wings? I gotta get into the movie! I have to know what's going on! These wings did not come out. Eventually, I leave the theater. I had to leave the screen, go back to the lobby, and got the wings bone dry. I had to put on my own buffalo sauce and mix them like I'm the chef in this situation. Clearly, the wings were just awful frozen trash that they threw in the microwave and called it a day. Kind of appropriate for the movie I was about to watch, honestly. So I get into the theater, and my brother, this was hilarious. My brother leaves, I don't know, 45 minutes in. It doesn't really matter when he goes. What matters is what he sees when he comes back. So as he's leaving to go pee, which takes him about a minute to do, same with myself. When there's a movie playing, we go in, we wash the hands, we go back. We're ready. We have to be in that space, in the zone. He leaves. Ben Affleck's character, Bruce Wayne is at the computer and he falls asleep. This is what my brother Jake leaves to. The next scene, remember I said this is poorly edited, the next scene is a fever dream where there's... <laughs> I forgot the name of these characters. Giant or Flying bat creatures. Uh, Batman's got a duster on. He's wearing... He's got a machine gun. He's rocking some goggles. Evil Superman's locked in the cellar downstairs. He unmasks him, sees Clark Kent, smiles. It's so screwed up. This is when my brother comes back. He comes back to this Mad Max-esque future dream. And he looks at me and he goes, What the hell did I miss? I turn to him. I say, I don't know. You don't do this in movies. This just... It, Ben Affleck didn't even fall asleep at the computer, I don't believe. It just jump cuts to this. When it goes back to Affleck, Flash is suddenly there. Future Flash through a portal saying, Martha's the key. She's the only... Oh, and he flies away. Bonkers. Disastrous editing. Uh, I found that incredibly funny. Just the fact that... My brother was completely sideswiped by what just happened. He thought he left and came back a half hour later into the movie, but no, it was it was instantaneous. Oh, Batman v Superman. Last on the honorable mention, something that's not terribly long ago was Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. I went to Infinity War with both of my kids, Olivia and Connor. We were floored that they killed a huge cropping of our favorite superheroes turned to dust from the snap 
The fact that they were bold enough to end on such a dour note, such a sour place, was fantastic. I was like, okay, Russo brothers, good on you. Thanks for actually doing something with some stakes for once. Thanos wins the day. We're going to get him an endgame. Endgame, although vastly overrated, did the right things correctly. It brought the team together, a massive battle, high stakes ensemble, taking down Thanos. Thanos, I'm sorry. Thanos, I apologize. I apologize. It, everybody gets a little time to shine, and the crowd was just erupting. It was a full house. What's really funny about this experience was my buddy Derek came out to this movie, hadn't seen Infinity War, hadn't seen Black Panther, hadn't seen probably 75% of the MCU movies. We met up for dinner before the movie started. We had about an hour and a half to crunch. Keep in mind, no matter how much info we gave him, no matter how many clips we showed him, no matter how many pivotal moments he had seen, that's not the same as actually slow building into this. That's not the same as sitting down and watching all 15 or 18, whatever it ended up being, movies before getting to Endgame. But it was just hilarious trying to catch him up. Okay, Derek, this is Doctor Strange. He's an important character. Did you see his movie? No? Okay, let me tell you how he got his powers. All right, over here is Black Widow. Do you know her? Yeah, I think I've seen her peppered throughout this thing. Okay, uh, do you know who Thanos is even? Not familiar. All right, well, okay, let's go watch the movie now. This will be miserable. But it was a great time. And Derek liked it too. My friend Derek, he had a good time. We're going to now go to the actual list. These are the top five moments in movie history for me. Movie experiences, not movies that I love, just the experiences that I wish I could relive. In the number five spot, the year is May, <laughs> the year is May, <laughs> I was going to get to it, the year is 1999, May 19, a 17-year-old spry Adam, in his prime, according to no one, is sitting in class Watching the talk, watching the clock, the talk, watching the clock talk, the hands ticking away, click, click, click. Every second feels like an hour. Every hour feels like an eternity. The clock hands are barely moving. I am waiting to get out of this hellscape known as high school with my buddy Tim. He's got a car, he's got a driver's license. We're going to jump into that thing, haul ass to the local movie theater. It's a small theater chain. It's in New Walm, Minnesota. Because what's playing here today, ladies and gentlemen, is a movie that we haven't seen on the big screen since the Star Wars trilogy was remastered with those garbage edits that featured a CGI animal thing going, and then the one up front goes, yeah. They, they took time. They spent money to put that into uh, into the Return of the Jedi. That's money well spent. I went and saw it. Anyway, this is the first brand new Star Wars movie. And it's going to usher in a brand new prequel trilogy. A prequel trilogy. No one's done any prequel stuff before. This is earth shattering shit. Certainly, it's going to lead to a bunch of great prequel movies down the road. This is a trend I'm definitely going to want to be part of. No. Prequels often suck. And this was just the beginning, baby. Regardless of what you think about Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, and this one, Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, it's the experience that I'm here to talk to you about. I don't care for the prequels. It's fine if you do. It's taster's choice, you know, subjective, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I also think it matters your age. A lot of younger people I noticed seem to really like this. This is Star Wars to them, and I don't want to take it from them. I'm not going to take it from them. Regardless of your, your taste, here's how this played out. The movie was at 12.01 a.m. Because... Back in the Diz, which is slang for back in the day, I, I think I just might have made that up. You could not see an early showing until Friday. Friday was the movie release date, no matter what. Couldn't change it, couldn't get around it, couldn't circumvent the law. The way they did, though, 
was to show a movie as early as humanly possible. So movie theaters would stay open until the freaking sun went down and well beyond. And they would play that movie, that big blockbuster that people have been craving for. For years we were teased about this Star Wars movie. We're in line around 3 o'clock, 3.30, whenever school got out. I'm doing the math in my head. So we had about nine hours before this movie was going to kick off. Nine hours in the summer on a sidewalk. The line is out the door around the side of the building. We're a little concerned we're not going to have a spot. We were thankfully assured by several people that asked the management there were plenty of seats available for us. So we bust out the Game Boys. This is 1999, folks. Pokemon is all the rage. I got a Game Boy in my pocket, and I'm happy to see myself. I got my Pikachu, I got my Bulbasaur, and I got hours to kill. We're sitting on a curb. Cars are going by. At one point, a family member jumps out, gives us a pizza pie. So we can have some sustenance, because we're here for a long time. We see teachers in line. We chatted up with them, talk about Star Wars and what we should expect from this film. And why the original trilogy is so magical and memorable. We see fellow students, classmates that maybe we ignore in the halls, maybe we're not friends with, but today we share a common good, a common goal, and that's to watch a Star Wars film. And even though the movie was disappointing, I have that awesome experience to look back on very fondly. It's, it, 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 it gives me goosebumps thinking about it, honestly. And it'll never happen again because movies aren't done this way anymore. You don't have to wait half a day to go see a film. You just show up. They have movie showings now on Thursdays at like 3 in the afternoon. They don't care anymore. There's The magic is all but gone. And that's why we live in the past. That's the healthy thing to do. In the number 4 spot. Lethal Weapon 4. The year is July 10th. 1998, this was only one year prior, one year Richard prior to the Star Wars. You know, you're going to notice something on this list. A lot of my movies on my memory, my memory hall of fame, take place when I'm a teenager because they are your most impactful years. They're the most, um, I'm at a loss for words, impressionable years. You're the most selfish in high school. You, um, you, you really take stock when you get older and look back on things like, man, I was kind of a D-bag, but those were some good times. Those were some great times. Lethal Weapon 4. Side note about Lethal Weapon. Maybe the most consistently titled series out there. Lethal Weapon 1, 2, 3, 4, boom, done. No frills, no special titling. It's just straight to the point. Die Hard kind of did that, but they lost it pretty early because you had Die Hard, then Die Hard 2, Die Harder, Die Hard with a Vengeance. It's all over with the numbering and the not having numbers. Then you have Fast and the Furious. That's a complete train wreck as far as titling goes. Alien doesn't do it right. Predator has like Predator, Predators, The Predator. What are they doing over there? What is happening over there? Even John Wick. Hey, John Wick. Then John Wick Chapter 2, I think, or Part 2. But then it's John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. They sneak in a subtitle. And then John Wick Chapter 4. Or John Wick 4. Whatever. They're no, there's no consistency. I want consistency. I understand, though, Parabellum. That, that's maybe the greatest title ever. It's hard to top it. So just walk away, basically. Lethal Weapon 4. The reason this one's on my list is for my dad. My late great father died in a car accident when I was in high school. Still stings thinking about it. Huge movie buff. We'll talk about my dad maybe in a future episode. We can go a little deeper into that whole conversation. Right now, though, I love this one because it was my dad, Tim, at, in his prime. We go to this movie. He's a huge Lethal Weapon fan. Loves Riggs, loves Murtaugh, loves the shenanigans. And it's one of the only times, I, my brother and I, my brother was with too, Jake. One of the only times we were both embarrassed of him in our existence on Earth. Because he was laughing hysterically for 10 minutes in that opening sequence. Where Riggs and Murtaugh are out in the rain 
and he's doing the chicken dance in his boxers. It's, it was funny. It wasn't that funny, dad, but he wouldn't shut up about it. And it was, I mean, I was down in my seat. I was cowering. Thankfully, there was only a few other people in there, or maybe that was worse because it, it made the volume even more obnoxious. Regardless, that that's, I mean, I just love it because my dad was so happy and Lethal Weapon's awesome. So it was a great combination. Nothing more to it than that. Lethal Weapon 4, by the way, great movie. All the Lethal Weapon movies are fantastic. I've said fantastic a lot in this podcast. I'll work on it. I'll work on getting out the thesaurus and using different words. <laughs> but uh, on the fly, it's a little challenging. Lethal Weapon 4, awesome movie. In the number three spot, let's build up to it. 2001. February 9th, Summer of Love. Is that summer even? I don't know. Yeah, that's summer. We're going to go with it. It's spring, summer, whatever. I go to the movie theater with my buddies. A couple girls are with. We're, you know, we're, we're late. We're late high school at this point. Seniors, I believe. Hannibal's the sequel to Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, phenomenal film. You could even say fantastic for the first time in a podcast to describe it. Hannibal, not so much. I don't like Hannibal. I find it gross and not in a cool way. I find the replacement actress to be subpar. And I don't mind Julianne Moore, but she's certainly no... She's certainly no... Um, oh my god, I can't think... <laughs> she, she certainly no... Can't think of her name. Jodie Foster... Uh, beautiful Jodie Foster, Nell, Panic Room, and of course Sounds of the Lambs, Little Man Tate, the underrated gem Maverick with Mel Gibson again, back to Mel Gibson. Uh, this movie though, to me, wasn't the, the experience. That wasn't the reason why I bring this up. It was actually the reason why I'm still with my wife, Lindsay, for 22 years now. High school sweethearts, since senior, but I knew her since middle schooler. Since middle schooler, since I was a middle schooler, I had my eyes on her. Off and on, of course. You, you you pick and choose. You go through different changes, different people interest you. But Lindsay was always one of the early ones that caught my fancy, as it were. I thought, that girl, I could see myself with her someday. And see, I did. Hannibal, I don't know if it was the fact that the movie just kind of sucked, I lost interest in it, or that... My natural pheromones were starting to rub off, and hers as well, because she was sitting next to me. My buddy Chris was next to her. Can't remember anybody else. There was a good row of us there. I'm sure we were just great to have in a theater together. I love teenagers in theaters. Our hands start to get close on that little divider arm thing, and they start to touch. And I notice she's not really pushing away, and of course I'm not either. Now I start to test. I start to tinker. I move in a little closer for the kill, like a snake finding its prey. She, the little mouse in the scenario, doesn't scurry off. Instead, she hunkers in, takes the embrace of the snake. Why am I, why am I this fictitious, mostly evil creature in storytelling? I don't know. Maybe because I love my wife and I do think she is the better half of us and made me a better person <laughs> over the years. Regardless, the snake got the mouse at the end of the day. He got its prey. And that's me. I do remember, though, reaching over, holding hands, and then I do a slow look up, and my buddy Chris is looking at me like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm just kind of like, oh, I'm going with it. We're doing it now. We're all in. And we stayed all in. For 22 years, we were together. On and off, a little bit here and there early on in high school, but for the most part, it was a solid ship. A couple rocky waves, sure. Maybe a, an iceberg to avoid once in a while, of course. We're doing ship analogies now. Let's move on. Hannibal, not a good movie, but man, was it a good first date. Technically not the first date. Our first date was on Valentine's Day. I took her to Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah, really went all out for that date. Applebee's? <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Taken. Number two. We are back in the year 1999, the same one that featured another favorite of mine, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. 
Now we're back with the movie I genuinely love. <laughs> Trinity, help! <laughs> Mr. Anderson. I'm just going to keep reliving parts of this movie because it's freaking insane how good it is. The Wachowskis crafted a movie experience like no other. The Matrix is balls to the wall insanity. Experimental. Bullet time. A camera rigging system that wraps around the actor. Taking hundreds of pictures that, that they then fluidly put together to make one of the coolest effects. Since, uh, since ever? I freaking love this movie. I saw it three times in theater. The first one was with my dad my brother, and a whole bunch of family members on the Olinger side. We're, we're talking a, a whole crew of guys, both young and old. We have no idea what this movie's about. The trailers are very, not, I, I want to say misleading, but very obscure, very abstract. There's a couple weird shots where he's dodging bullets. There's cool looking agents, but the experience is like no other. My, my jaw was down for most of this thing, especially the first half, which, which is a total head trip. Then you get into the gun fu and the badass hand-to-hand -hand combat, and all bets are off. I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan. I brought up Jean-Claude earlier today. Love the old schlocky fighting films. This movie marries all of it so effortlessly. Love The Matrix. And then, and then, again, I saw it two more times. Once with buddies from high school, another time with more buddies from high school. We just couldn't get enough. We were running up the walls and halls in class. We were pretending to do bullet time, you know, spinning around in slow motion. It was exhausting, I'm sure, for any teacher that year. This was when the internet was starting to really take off, too. So I had carte blanche to a computer in school. And what am I doing? I'm using a I'm using a GeoCities website and I'm making collage after ugly ass collage of Matrix posters, <laughs> Matrix scenes from films. And that's all I'm doing with my life. That's it. That's it. Other people in high school are maybe, you know, working on something for the future to better themselves. Maybe they're writing a script. Maybe they're learning advanced algebra. I'm making Matrix wallpapers. That's where I'm comfortable. That's where I like to live. In the number one spot. And this one's funny and heartbreaking. We'll get to the heartbreaking in a second. I should also point out, before I jump into it, to, that the Matrix, we have to paint a picture of that time period. Buka shell necklaces. Frosted tipped hair on Adam. I was rocking it. Frosted tipped. Uh, party up top. Business down below. I had the brunette hair and then the, the blonde tips. Drove the ladies nuts. They couldn't stand me. We had Mario 64 in the mix. We had uh, Golden Eye on the 64. This is all happening in the 90s. It was such a magical experience. Okay, let's move now to simpler times. The year is 1993. June 11th, to be exact. I'm at a St. Cloud Mall in Minnesota, of course, with my mom. I don't know where my brother and dad were. I don't really care because we were right next to the theater and my favorite movie of all time is playing. Da, da, na, na, da, na, 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 Jurassic Park. Welcome to the greatest thing you'll ever see in your life is what Steven Spielberg told me. My mom took me to this. This is such a great time for me because A, I'm not that old. I'm what, 8? 82, 83, 84, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90, 1, 2, 3. No, I'm 11, I think. I can't do math. I'm 11. Well, again, I'm making the Matrix collages, not doing math. 11-year-old Adam hasn't really seen a major blockbuster on the big screen, at least to my knowledge. At least that, to my recollection, I haven't seen a big boy movie like this yet. I know it's only PG-13, PG maybe? I think it's PG-13. And I never see movies with my mom. She's pretty ADD. She might not say it, but she kind of is. It's very hard for her to sit and watch an hour and a half, two hour movie without bringing up some random crap 
that's in her head that has nothing. There's nothing worse than watching a movie that you think the person you're watching with is fully invested. And you turn over and you're like, did you see that? Only to have them say something completely offhand. Like, did Carol uh, get back to you yesterday about getting my hot dish pan back, Adam? Uh, Mom, there are raptors right now in the kitchen. What the hell are you talking about? Can you just focus? Can you be present, please? Carol will get you the damn pan back. Carol's not in the kitchen right now, running from raptors, fearing for her life. Let's let's focus on these children. Their lives are depending on us to be here. Anyway, we saw this in theaters from the opening act, where those trees are swaying, and you have the the security guy yelling, "Shoot!" Shoot! You hear the loud raptor noises <laughs> hit in the cage. I was just in my element. I thought, yep, this is what it is. This, this is my life now. It's all about movies for me. I love this so much. I want more. I will see movies every damn day if I can. This is the experience I constantly crave now. I know Jurassic Park isn't the greatest movie of all time. It's my greatest movie of all time for a multitude of reasons. The place I was at when I watched it. The year I was when I watched it. The person I was with when I watched it. The amazing director, Steven Spielberg, who's made countless phenomenal films. The actual care and artistry on display. The use of brilliant practical effects with giant animatronic dinosaurs to marrying that with new gen technology i didn't even mean to say new gen because of the dinosaur thing but new generation technology such as cgi something that was very new at the time we're getting fully rendered dinosaurs running at the camera seamlessly blended in the next shot with a giant t-rex who's fully automated. It is brilliant how they did this movie. There, I could, I could go on for days about why Jurassic Park is my favorite film. Maybe we do a podcast about it later. But for now, it's not only my favorite movie, but it's my favorite movie experience. And man, is that uh, a lot. That's a lot. We're almost at 40 minutes. I feel like I covered everything I wanted to. Of course, this, uh, these aren't all the great you know, memories I've had at the movies. I can think of a, I mean, I could go on. I could go on. We could do entire weeks worth of podcasts and just movie memories of me biking. I brought up the game earlier. I legitimately biked and saw the game on a sunny Sunday afternoon with friends. We went into the theater at probably one in the afternoon, walked out. The sun is just hitting us like we're vampires. Like, yeah. And that movie, man, that was a trip. That was a trip. I remember seeing Alien, uh, what was it, Resurrection with a couple girls that I was really into. Movie was all right. I know it gets a lot of hate, but I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was all right. (laughs) That was pretty cool. Toy Story on the big screen. The fact that we were getting this new generation of animation in a way we have never seen before. Emperor's New Groove. Being one of the few people in the theater watching it, laughing my ass off at how hilarious it was. This is a Disney movie? Starring David Spade being a complete smartass? I mean, come on. I could go on and on. But these are some of the special ones that I remember. And there's more. Of course there's more. But I'd love to hear from you on it now, too. So if you're you're on YouTube watching this, please put a comment below. If not, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching if you're over there. And, uh, you know, this is the first episode. We'll get better. We'll we'll make some changes. We'll adjust. Unless this was just all peaches and cream. That's an expression I'm using this time and never again. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. But thanks again for watching or listening as Adam does movies. And we will see you next Monday. Take care.